No, please, no, please, please. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for inviting me. I'm, I'm really honored to speak uh, to you, to many important people, to many young people that usually are demanding people. No? Mm. The issue that they ask uh, to speak about, they ask me to speak about, uh, is uh, sustainability. But the first question I put to myself is, what does sustainability mean? This is because uh, uh, when I was young, I studied uh, a little German literature, and uh, I was impressed by a statement of Rainer Maria Rilke that uh, said, if I would know more words, I would understand more things. This is the point that sometimes we <coughs> assume that uh, uh, we uh, put the same meaning in the words uh, that we mention, but maybe uh, our counterpart uh, put another meaning in the same word. So, from this point of view, what is the meaning of the word sustainability? The word sustainability can have different meanings depending on the parties involved. If they are economics, philosopher, politician, firms, or religious, maybe today's anniversary, let us uh, think that uh, a moral hmm, meaning of this word uh, could be the most important one, freedom would be the meaning uh, for sustainability today in Berlin. The most famous definition of sustainability was given by Barnland Commission in 1987. According to this definition, development is sustainable if it meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs. The subject is very complex and uh, deeply debated. The only scientific collaboration that we have seen so far was between the philosopher and the economists. However, they still have difficulties in understanding each other. One of the most debated theme between economists and philosophers is sustainability in terms of population. Considering both the economic, the economic and the philosophical perspective, we still come to identify two different issues, the optimal population size and the intergenerational justice. Furthermore, not only the overall size of population is key for determining the sustainability, but also its geographical and qualitative composition. In a nutshell, the inverse correlation between levels of education and fertility. Who are the players in charge of the future social and economic development? Intellectuals who have to give an answer to many unresolved dilemmas, such as how to optimize the use of resources, descending altruism, demographic planning, and so on. Governments accountability. It is the politicians that are in charge of developing the welfare rules. Key players of the, econom of the economy, firms. The rule of the firms, that maybe is my experience. Talking about firms, they play an important role in the development of sustainability, how the economies can continue to grow while confronted to limited natural and financial resources, as well as legal and environmental constraints. I mean the viability theory. This opens up the economic dilemma of maximizing results 
either in the short or long term. The literature on the subject agrees that such a growth possibility is based on the ability to maintain a permanent stream of innovation, assuring long-term technological progress. In other words, it highlights the key role of R&D. Regulation and economic efficiency are constraints dri driving firms in opposite direction. The case is very famous, I suppose all of you know the, the case study of uh, the um, Japanese industry producing uh, the chloralkali. Uh, if I can mention uh, 50 years ago in the 60s, uh, uh, the, this um, industry, especially very important in Japan, uh, was based on a process uh, that uh, made a massive use of a toxic substance, mercury. No? At the beginning of the 70s, the Japanese authorities uh, started to impose industry to limit mercury in their uh, industrial process. So uh, the Japanese industries started with a big uh, program of research in order to develop a new uh, process. Uh, after many years uh, and after big investment, they uh, started with a, a new process that uh, was uh, still based uh, on uh, electrolytic system, uh, but without mercury. But they, at that time, discovered how this new process was uh, uh, so uh, expensive in terms of uh, consumption of energy that uh, in the meantime uh, increased uh, the prices. So they had to start again for 10 years in order to find another process that was both uh, respecting the environment and uh, with a, a low consumption of energy. Uh, this is a case of uh, the problem in order to balance uh, environmental uh, issues and uh, economic issues. Indeed, the correlation between resources scarcity and innovation, as well as the relationship between regulation and economic behavior is widely recognized. Scarce resources are increasingly expensive and this affects the behavior of firms and consumers and shapes the path of technological progress, which needs also to satisfy the environmental constraints. Talking about environment, it's worth observing that the mere regulatory action is neither effective nor sufficient to protect the environment. At this point, a new important player enters into action, people, who need to develop a civic consciousness with the aim to impose to others a more responsible attitude towards the environment. As a matter of fact, it has been said that you can't legislate morality. In this regard, fortunately, we can observe how wiser our younger generation since they have absorbed the message from intellectuals. As far as the powerful technological tool is concerned, on one hand, is essential for solving industrial problems, such as in the example I mentioned earlier. On the other hand, it poses the problems of the jobs reduction, which is an element of weakness in the welfare state. Throughout the history of the industry, the great technological innovation of the past have resulted in the immediate loss of jobs. 
But, however, in the past, these loss of jobs were soon replaced by new business initiatives as a result of the economy's development triggered by the new technologies. Conversely, this is a problem maybe today, in recent decades, scientific and technical revolutions have caused greater loss of jobs than those created. This phenomenon is likely due to the acceleration of technology, technological development occurred in the last century, which has not had enough time to bear fruit. I hope so, but today this is a big problem. But I would like to pause for a moment. These are matters uh, that I can just tell because their the theoretical development should be left to economists uh, and the philosophers. What I can report here today is just a smaller point of view. Given my experience in a company where the manufacturing is a key factor in the value chain, I don't know if uh, we can uh, show some, uh, some, some, some pictures in order to show what is Prada. Prada is uh, an Italian international company listed in Hong Kong with a total turnover of uh, 3 billion and a half euro per year that we realize all over the world. No? Roughly, roughly speaking, one billion and a half in Europe, one billion and a half in Asia, and the rest uh, both in uh, half billion, a little less, in Americas and uh, uh, 350 million in Japan, that I don't include in uh, uh, Asia Pacific as normally firms uh, consider Japan something different <laughs> continent. <laughs> it's not true, but this is the habit. And <coughs> what we uh, produce and what we sell <coughs> are uh, luxury goods uh, that we produce and distribute directly <coughs> all over the world. So <coughs> we are a <coughs> in international firms, uh, not enormous, uh, not so little, in our sector, we are big enough. Mm, but uh, in this regard, uh, energy and environmental issues are not serious constraints uh, for a sector like luxury, ex except for the possibility to recover energy in our, let me say, factories that are not uh, energy consuming, but uh, we can do something and uh, we can do something in terms of environment uh, because we can manage our uh, production and our products in terms of recovery, chemicals, products for fabrics, for instance. But this is not uh, the main concern or a big problem for such an industry that uh, we are. No? is rather more relevant, the issue of demography for us, what I mean. Eh? I'm referring to the change in geographic and qualitative distribution of population that in place the loss of manufacturing capabilities in Western countries. Also caused by demographic stagnation and by cultural development of the society in Western countries. Activities with low operating margins have been progressively transferred to developing countries, but this social phenomenon has recently expanded. And you know that uh, it's continuing the outsourcing to uh, third parts of the world no, for this kind of activities. Maybe it's not uh, big problem for luxury goods uh, company, but uh, is a, a big problem for apparel industry, uh, for um, uh, mass uh, product. And 
uh, this could be an advantage for poor countries, but it could be a problem for Western countries. Hmm. So the alternative is outsource or invest. As a consequence, firms may decide to outsource these activities or alternatively invest in improving the technology, so as paving the way for maintaining tight control over the value chain. What does it mean? R&D can certainly help improving productivity and thus partially offsetting the higher cost of labor of developed countries. However, this kind of manufacturing activities with high craftsmanship content are by definition labor intensive. For this reason, in order to recover competitiveness, you need other key factors. The quality of products, higher value of products, the educational plans in terms of school orientation and training programs from, for young people. But, again, a cultural approach is in this case very important. Putting more emphasis on the recovery of dignity and value to this type of work, which in the recent past has been re relegated to the rule of material function. I think that uh, at the end of the day, my conclusion is uh, sustainability is a question of culture. No? The example of my sector is just a little one, but uh, is important to agree that uh, a new culture ca can help uh, the sustainability and uh, the intergenerational justice for the new generation. Mm? If you have in mind no, this main point no, for our future, no, we can manage both in terms of uh, let me say, recovery of resources, both in terms of respect on the environment, both in terms of respect of people, no? of their freedom, mm? of their dignity, mm? in order to establish programs mm? by the firms, by the government. I don't agree very often people uh, think that uh, in Italy uh, there are a lot of very clever enterpriser, enter entrepreneurs, but uh, uh, politicians are not so fair. I don't agree. No? In Italy the problem is culture, hmm? both for firms, both for uh, politicians. If uh, we agree a m deeper uh, consciousness about uh, the responsibility hmm, of uh, everybody, we can develop <laughs> our skill. Hmm. But uh, I can <laughs> just hope that uh, uh, everyone could put in place uh, his best effort in order to um, uh, plan the future. What we are doing, uh, but again, is a very little example regarding uh, this point, uh, is uh, a mind more international, considering uh, the habit of other <coughs> countries, considering uh, the culture of the other countries, <coughs> and uh, we are planning uh, from this point of view, an hiring program of uh, new employees uh, from everywhere in the world. We are planning uh, to establish uh, a school in, uh, in Italy for, uh, um, tra for the training of young people in manufacturing, because I think that, of course, the normal 
transfer of uh, some activities from uh, countries to other countries is not possible to, uh, let me say, uh, to avoid because uh, this is the history of the industry in the past uh, centuries. Uh, but uh, we have to avoid, to destroy knowledge, hmm? to destroy the know-how of uh, some countries uh, like uh, in Italy for the manufacturing, for the design. Of course, we have to improve the quality of our um, activities and uh, from this point of view, we have to, let me say, sustain you know, the uh, tradition hmm, of our people, of our work. Hmm. This is uh, uh, what I uh, can, uh, can say to you. Uh, if uh, uh, there is some, uh, some question, some curiosity <laughs> regarding uh, very peculiar activity like uh, Prada uh, <laughs> activity. I am here and I'm very happy to answer your question. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Macha. Unfortunately, I think the presentation is not running. Uh, but no, uh, we are very happy that uh, you allow the auditorium to ask some questions. Are there some questions or remarks? It's yes, over there. So, uh, the in the industry is could, you, could you please speak oh, the microphone? Oh, hello, I'm Nancy Fido, and uh, I, I have a question with regard to we have the same problem in New York and the United States, uh -huh. uh, and that is both culturally and uh, the evolution of this knowledge uh, in, in producing products. So your, uh, please uh, tell us more about this school mm -hmm. that you are establishing mm -hmm. and how this will be integrated and used uh, because it's a long-term project, I think. Yes, it is. Um, but let me say that in US, uh, no, <coughs> you started already with uh, a new develop in manufacturing activity inside in your country, no? And uh, this is also an inspiration for us, no? To uh, study how to uh, maintain in our country. This is not, uh, let me say, a competition of new countries, eh? Absolutely not. It's a question to define and to divide, no? The different phase of uh, the process. No? What can uh, the developed countries maintain inside, of course? No? The high value uh, phase of the, uh, because their costs are higher mm, by definition. Mm? Having said that, uh, our school uh, that we are uh, planning uh, to establish next year is a school in Tuscany, eh, where there is the tradition of uh, leather goods production. Mm. Uh, and we are planning uh, to, um, to guest uh, 60, 100 young people mm, for a program of uh, uh, at least one year. At the moment, we don't know if uh, it could be enough or not, but I, we hope so. At least one year with experience both uh, in class uh, and both by the factory. Mm? In order to let them uh, to uh, get practice no, in this kind of activities, leather goods, uh, but also ready to wear, mm? and shoes, of course. Because at the moment, uh, the uh, school orientation in Italy no, is uh, not so, let me say, technical, no, but just uh, uh, general uh, culture. Uh, we agree that general culture is very important, especially if 
you want to move your activity to higher level of quality, no? Because higher level of quality implies uh, a knowledge, a culture, no? Especially for uh, the products that we are providing that uh, are uh, based on style, no? And style is something strictly related uh, with culture, no? We consider also a very important relation with art mm, in order to develop the style that uh, we add to our products. This school is not for employees, it's just for students that uh, we have to, let me say, compensate for the time that they spend in order to maintain their presence by us. But at the end of this period, we think that uh, we could uh, hire no, a majority of them or a big part of them, but they are free no, to go back, uh, maybe he, to, uh, to back, go back home no, in uh, another country, in the uh, south of Italy, in north of Italy, and uh, to uh, work for other um, companies. Mm. Uh, you have another two questions now yes. <coughs> I know, I know the lady. Yes. <laughs> I, <laughs> I know that you know that. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mazzi, thank you for your introduction. And uh, I, I want to ask you, what is your opinion on an international company and the European tax regulation? What do you think about uh, the um, comments that were recently in the press? Well, I'm from Luxembourg, so perhaps you understand my question. Yeah. Are you based uh, where you pay taxes or are you not paying taxes where you are based? How is this problem? Mm -hmm. There is a, an answer, but it's just in Italian. I'm not able uh, to translate. No, maybe my friend Mr. Rutelli could help me. No? Non si parla di corda in casa dell'impiccato. <laughs> but no, uh, yeah. <laughs> Your issue is very delicate, uh, especially uh, for our recent uh, experience. No? For uh, the problem of uh, regulation and tax regulation among uh, different countries uh, is a big problem today uh, because uh, um, the market is global. No? This is the point, and there is not a choice of uh, a single firm, a single person. The market is global. Mm? So this is a, a question very important, I suppose, also for government, you know, because there are little countries that are not able to do anything for their uh, uh, finance, for their economy, because uh, they are maybe uh, more little than a single firm. Mm? But uh, from a company point of view, an international company that has to uh, organize uh, the market uh, on international basis, the <coughs> differences in tax regulation are a very big problem, no? Because, of course, a firm try to maximize no, the result and to reduce each cost. And tax are, at the end of the day, a cost. Mm. At the same time, uh, countries try to compete against mm, other countries that offer mm, a better uh, condition mm, with uh, some constraints, mm? really constraints. Mm? They deny mm? uh, the possibility to establish no, our holding in Luxembourg, mm? for instance, <laughs> because they uh, say that uh, is a false mm? holding. The holding is not a Luxembourg one, it's just from me an Italian one, because Italian are the shareholders, mm, and the shareholders 
establish what the policy and the program of uh, this company, so this company is Italian. In this way, you uh, are in a very uncomfortable condition no? to uh, balance the situation. Do I am Luxembourg or do I am Italian? Eh? In this moment, I have to pay tax both in Luxembourg and Italy. Hmm? <laughs> but I repeat, uh, market is speeder hmm, than uh, people. Hmm? So I think that uh, uh, one of uh, the, the important uh, issue in the next years uh, by, uh, for the governments are to regulate no, the international trading and the international financial regulation. Because it's true that uh, we have uh, at the moment many interesting economic trade, uh, international trade organization, international uh, trade agreements but we have not international tax agreement. This is very important. And this uh, is uh, um, not simply, a, uh, let me say, um, a tricky problem for Luxembourg that could be penalized by this new uh, approach, but is a real, uh, this is the point, is a real problem for each country, because if I don't, Italy, for instance. If I don't accept hmm, that Italian, uh, originally Italian uh, multinational companies hmm, is allowed to put their organization uh, abroad, at the end, what happened? That the Italian hmm, international companies move totally from Italy. So. Now we can impact Luxembourg, but tomorrow will impact Italy or another country. I don't know if. Uh, huh? okay, thank you. We will have the last question. Last Before question. Mark, I think also the diversity of our freedom, law, yeah. also taxes. Yeah. <laughs> former, I'm former director general, and I'm former secretary general of the UN Conference on Trade and Development. I have two questions. I try to formulate it briefly. Yeah. I'll be a little bit blunt, so I hope our friends from Europe in this room would not mind my question. Mm. The first question that I would like to put to you, mm. Mr. Marco, is that uh, in spite of all the integrated efforts of the European Union yeah. in Europe, between some parts of Europe, mm. northern part of Europe, let me be frank, northern part of Europe and southern part of Europe, mm -hmm. where Italy belongs, mm -hmm. seems to still be a big win. Mm -hmm. I see the kind of policies that would have to resolve the economic crisis that is still ongoing in Europe in spite of the world coming out of, of the Great Recession from 2000 to 2000, 2008 to 2009, that is a matter of political paralysis within the European Union. That is a that is a, a deep, deep conviction in, in Germany that people must be austere in their fiscal policy. While the southern part of Europe will need more stimulus. Example Italy. The recent stress test of the bank in Europe has shown us that the financial institution in the southern part of Europe had a word. I'm sorry to say in Italy Nine banks, nine banks fared the worst. Mm. They have capital below the mm. level that mm. should be uh, allowed by the GS, GS Bank and Bank of Germany. So my first question is this. How yeah, can... Yeah, please let the uh, accounts speakers come back. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Is it on? Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Please come back. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> oh, now, now you can hear. Now, 
how, how, can we, how can we bridge this cultural gap in Europe? Let, let me say this, really. This financial culture, there are different kinds of culture. The financial culture are just so different in so many parts of Europe that that would be you know, nearly well nigh impossible task to bridge the way supervision of banks in the northern part of Europe and the banks in the southern part of Europe will have to follow the same rules. So austerity or stimulus in Europe. Europe cannot decide today I mean, Europe is, is not slowly, it's quickly going down the drain in terms of the economic recovery. This is sad for the whole world, sad for Europe certainly, but this is my first question. How can we bridge that? The second question is about Prada Group. When I, when I travel around the world, I, I saw Prada uh, shops around the world. Shops, uh, Prada shops in Asia, full with people, full with customers. Shops of Prada elsewhere in the world, particularly in Europe, not so full with people. Uh, my question is this, I mean, how can we together between Europe and Asia and maybe Asia and the rest of, world, of the world work together so that the kind of demand deflation that we are seeing in the world, which is not really caused in Asia but caused in the rest of the world, can be remedied? Because the demand, the demand expansion in Asia is going on quite well because of the larger and expanding group of middle income earners in Asia and the rate of growth that has been maintained around 5 to 6% in Asia, while in Europe it's just below 1%. So how can, how can we work together so that we can maintain the kind of demand expansion that would be good for the whole world? Thank you. Thank you very much. Could you try to answer briefly? Yeah. <laughs> very brief. The first question of Europe, of the financial system in Europe is maybe uh, not my task because I'm just a simple <laughs> businessman. But uh, having said that, I can just repeat that uh, the uh, firm approach hmm, is international. No? So we hope that the cooperation hmm, all over the world could improve in order to establish the best condition for business, the best condition for work. Business maybe is a word that can uh, have a meaning, uh, not, not so novel, but work. Hmm? Work is uh, acceptable for everybody. No? So the condi uh, we hope the best condition for develop of work of uh, everyone. And uh, from this point of view, we, uh, our position is that uh, we don't uh, understand this uh, uh, uncertainty into uh, Europe, no? And this uncertainty are, and this, uh, mm, uh, let me say, inefficiency of uh, the <coughs> Europe uh, is, b is for, for me, eh, in my opinion, is because uh, the politician integration is not enough, no? We can't manage just uh, financial integration without politician integration, no? So, of course, uh, the situation of South and North Italy is the situation, uh, in South and North Europe is the situation of South and North Italy, no? Because in Italy there is the same problem if you go inside. Uh, today there are a lot uh, of protests, uh, no? By group of people, uh, by uh, regions, no? Against the unification of Europe. I don't agree, I don't understand. I think that the advantage that you can catch in short time uh, with division no, are uh, disadvantage in medium and long term. No? And the second question, uh, the difference in uh, Asia and in Europe uh, is uh, first of all uh, in this moment caused by uh, economic situation that uh, in Europe uh, we have a depressed situation. Hmm? And uh, in Europe, the second problem is that uh, our products are mainly destined to tourists, no? also internal tourists, but you know that in this moment for the currency reason of Euro, so expensive, a little bit less in the last days, uh, the tourist flow from Asia had moved to US, 
or internally in Asia itself. So uh, the difference uh, in, re in the result and the flow of the customer is based uh, mainly on this point. And another point is, uh, let me tell a little story in order to conclude. <laughs> My presence uh, is that uh, uh, two months ago I went to visit Iran, hmm? a country that I love. Hmm? <laughs> and I was surprised seeing how many people, how many shops they have in the same street for domestic machines. Hmm? They are one domestic machine shops every 200 meters. Full of customer, but the reason is simple, no? Because uh, this country is the, in the first experience, in the first moment, they have the possibility to buy domestic machine they don't have still now. Hmm? So this is not the case of Asia for luxury product, but the problem is that the uh, China, for instance, and other country in Asia are experienced no, for the first time uh, this kind of products because till uh, some decades no, ago uh, there are uh, no the possibilities uh, to uh, export these products there. There are no the possibility to establish a network. Now we are establishing a network for them is very new and is more attractive by definition. I don't know if uh, this is uh, <laughs> satisfactory. The question. Thank you, Mr. Mazza. When, I, when, you I, when I'm not wrong, yes, your, your applause no, first. No, no, please. No. <laughs> For me, it seems that you would be able now to show the five um, pictures you want to show about your no, uh, enterprise. Uh, there are just uh, the, the picture with the count, with the. Uh, ah. Okay, but these are. Uh, the, the, these are pictures in order to. It's finished? No. Ah, okay. Uh, picture of our, pro our product. Uh, ah, this is a picture uh, uh, of our shops, uh, of our manufacturing activities. Uh, uh, and. Uh, These are, uh, you know, our uh, advertising activities. Uh, and But this is another, in order to answer, another activity. This is the museum in Venice uh, that the Prada Foundation is managing. Eh? And uh, echo, the, the only maybe <laughs> picture that I wanted to show is uh, our uh, turnover, no? total revenues. Uh, Three billion and a half, uh, and total employees uh, eleven thousand eight hundred people all over the world. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>